God, whoever imagined that, huh? <laughs> Snap. God's been good to me. I don't know the rest of it. Praise God. <laughs> revelation chapter 12. We need a revelation right away. What a time and season, huh? I'm telling you, it's snapping. Glory. <laughs> Thank you, Master. Revelation 12. Not that we've not heard this already, but how many, did you ever realize that you can read a scripture and read it a hundred times and get a hundred different messages? It's because it's the Holy Spirit. In verse 7. Revelation 12, 7, and war broke out in heaven. Where did it break out? In heaven, in the unseen realm. This is at the throne room of God. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon. And the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was a place found for them in God's atmosphere anymore. Or in his presence. So the dragon was kicked out. He was cast out. The serpent of old called the devil and Satan. Who what? Who don't what? Who deceives Europe? <laughs> who deceives Italy? Who deceive? No, it says who deceives the United States. No, it deceives the whole world. Who deceives the whole world? He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast with cast with him. Then I heard a loud voice. Saying in heaven, our salvation and the strength and the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ has come. Thank you, Jesus. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to death. Therefore rejoice, O heavens, and you who dwell in them. But woe, what's woe mean? Without eternity to the inhabitants of the earth and the sea. For the devil has come down to you having great wrath. Because why? He knows that he has a short time. How many of y'all know that he's got a short time? He's pulling out everything he can right now. Everything. I mean, have you noticed what's going on in this country? I mean, you've never seen so much wickedness in our government. We've never seen so much wickedness and evil in our own government, besides other countries. Verse 13, now when the dragon saw that he had been cast to the earth, he persecuted the woman who gave birth to the male child. Now we know this represents Israel. Amen? Amen. But the woman, now we are the woman also, so that's the body of Christ. But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle. Those two wings, I believe, are Moses and Elijah. That she might fly into the wilderness to her place where she is nursed for time and time and a half, which is what? Three and a half years. From the presence of the serpent from the presence of evil, from the presence of sin. Or you might even, I'll go over this again. So the serpent spewed water out of his mouth like a flood after the woman that he might cause her to be carried away by the flood. Why? Because his people were carried away by the flood in the time of Noah. But the earth helped the woman 
And the earth opened up its mouth and swallowed up the flood, which the dragon had spewed out of its mouth. And the dragon was enraged with the woman. And he went to make war with the, her, with the, her, the rest of her offspring. Why? Because he couldn't get the woman. Why? Because the woman had been raptured. We are the woman. And he went to go make war with the rest of the offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. These 10 verses are essential to true reality where true reality versus false reality. It says, here it is, which is powerful. War broke out in heaven. In other words, war was against deception. The battle was against deception, false perception. The battle was against delusion. The battle is still against slavery, bondage. I'm going to say them again. And sins. In other words, this battle is still going on. It is against deception, false perception, delusion, slavery, bondage, and sins. And we know that sins is Satan's influential networking system. Has everybody got it? This shape-shifting falling angel called the dragon, serpent, devil, beast, prince of power of error, angel of light, and father of lies, and even called death, controls, manipulates the earth, environment, atmosphere with deception, lust, and fear. It is to keep mankind in a state of blindness from the truth of Christ and from the escape of hell. Of course, he will eventually end up there himself in the lake of fire. There's a prophetic message of rescue and escape that was granted to the followers of Christ known as the rapture. There's a reference to the earth helping the woman. Of course, the flood, just like the earth opened up and released water of the great flood of Noah as an escape in the ark of the boat. But this escape will be because of the ark of the covenant. There is a battle of sight and blindness. We are constantly battling this. Again, Satan's influential networking system controls the earth. And 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Second Corinthians chapter four. Hallelujah. Tonight's teaching is called Power of Suggestion. Anybody ever give you a suggestion that stunk? Yeah. <laughs> they gave you a suggestion that didn't work. <laughs> then you realize it stunk. <laughs> you thought it sounded good at first. <laughs> Verse 1, therefore, since we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we do not lose heart, but we have renounced. The hidden things of what? Shame. Renounce means to be exposed by spokenness. We have renounced the hidden things of shame. In other words, we've renounced or spoken, exposed the hidden things that we've been blinded to. Not walking in craftiness nor handling the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But even if our gospel, our message of truth, it is veiled, it is veiled to those who are what? Perishing. 
whose minds the God of this age has what? Blinded. In other words, they've been taken captivity. He has got them in a state of mind control. Everyone say mind control. And how does he keep someone in a state of mind control? By the power of suggestion. And we'll talk more about this. Whose minds the God of the sage has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel, the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. But we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord our, and ourselves, your bondservants, for Christ's sake. For it is God who came, commanded light to shine out of darkness. Shine out of darkness. Shine out of, what is darkness? That's Satan's influential networking system, isn't it? To shine out of darkness. Who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus. Again, we have renounced, we've exposed by our mouth the hidden things of sin or the hidden things of, our, of, of the influencing, Satan's influencing network that we were blinded to. The message of the truth or true reality is known as the gospel. I mean, it's a message of truth. And what's it for? To help to bring someone out of darkness so that they may see clearly and break the power of suggestion off of their lives from the enemy's forces. Again, the gospel is veiled or has blinded their sight and their thoughts. It's blinded their sight and their thoughts to become free. And it brings them in a position of bondage and slavery. One of the things that the enemy does is he controls minds and thoughts. It's suggestion. It's called the power of suggestion. It's actually called mind control. Amen? The power of suggestion. You know, in Proverbs 18, would you go there for a minute, please? Proverbs 18. Oh, yes. In verse 21. First word is death. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life are in the power of words that influence suggestion. Does everybody get it? Those words can influence a suggestion that can lead to death or they can lead to life. One is deception that leads to death. The other one is truth that leads to life. It is called the power of suggestion or persuasion. In Romans 6, That's why people speak to their plants. They speak life to their plants. They... Anyways, I won't go there. <laughs> of course, the plant can't answer you back, so it's probably a good conversation for some people. <laughs> oh, how pretty you are. Oh. Anyways. <laughs> If I don't produce fruit, get it out of here. <laughs> <laughs> of 
glory. <laughs> Verse 15. Romans 6, 15. <laughs> what then? Shall we sin? Because we are not under the law, but under God's plan of called grace? Certainly not. Do you not know that to whom you present yourselves slaves to obey, you are that one slaves whom you obey, whether of sin. Now, what sins? Satan's influential networking, right? Leading to death. Or of obedience leading to what? Righteousness. In other words, this power of suggestion by Satan's kingdom presses on me and you all the time. All the time. Even when you sleep. That's why you have goofy dreams sometimes. If you remember any. Verse 17. But God be thanked that though you were slaves of this network called sin, yet you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Did you notice he used the word heart because the mind was still in captivity? And having been set free from this influence, you became slaves of what? Righteousness. I speak in human terms because of the weakness of your flesh. For just as you presented your members as slaves to, of uncleanness and of lawlessness, leading to more lawlessness, so now present your members as slaves of righteousness for what? Holiness. So whose choice is to present yourself? Ours. Oh, yeah. For when you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? For the end of those things is death. But now having been set free from sin, the atmosphere, presence of this influencing network, and have become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. So, in other words, individuals are still slaves to Satan's influential networking system by suggestion, by suggested. It was mind control. They were taken captive in control. Their thoughts were influenced resulting in false perception, false imagery, sinful desires, lust of the eye, lust of the flesh, pride of life, and evil or wicked appetites. Mind controlled. Think about it. Why do people backslide? If there was no influence or suggestion, they wouldn't. Amen? They just wouldn't. That's why the Word tells us about those who overcome what? Temptation. What's this temptation? It's suggested influence from every networking system of Satan's kingdom who rules this earth. Amen? Ephesians 2. Oh, hallelujah. In verse 1, Ephesians 2, verse 1. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of power of error, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. How did he keep these individuals disobedient or rebellious? By continuous suggestion, keeping their minds captive. Among 
whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and who were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. For God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. And what's grace mean? God's plan of escape. And raised us up together and made us sit. He made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding great riches of his grace and his kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not, uh, not of yourselves. It is a gift from God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. But it does take cooperation, doesn't it? For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. In other words, there is a free will and a choice that we should walk in them. We were controlled by the prince of power of error. Now, let me explain to you what the prince of power of error utilizes. Let me tell me, how many of y'all know the devil uses technology? <laughs> yeah, you betcha. You see everybody walking around with phones. They almost run over people. Amen. They're selfied. I'm telling you, this girl walked right in front of me. She's on her phone. The, the light was green. What, paid no attention. If I had a rubber bumper, I might have bumped her. Wake her up a little bit. We, we were controlled by the prince of power of airwaves. We were controlled by the prince of power of airwaves. Everything has a frequency. Everything. Everything has a vibration which releases a frequency. It radiates from us and in us and through us and all around. Brain waves have a frequency. These frequencies can be piggybacked with things that can bring suggestion. That's what's called witchcraft also. When it's piggyback, it brings a mind control subliminal messages that alter the state of suggestion. It can bring, again, deception, slavery, addiction. It's utilized through music. It's utilized through drugs, radio, foods, Prescription pills, TV programs. Look at the power in people who are bound with gambling or pornography. Constantly leaving. Because these frequencies get piggybacked with subliminal messages. Some people fall into a hypnotic trance we call possession. From evil entities. In Ephesians chapter 5. I don't know if you've seen recently these days, but taking a cell phone away from a child is almost like taking heroin away from an addict. Someone would rather die than get help. You know how many times a, a heroin addict has overdosed and they brought him out by shooting him up with, what is it called? Narcan or whatever it is. And the first thing they say, man, you ruined my high. But you were dying. You were about dead, but you ruined my high. Same thing with people with cell phones. It is releasing a wave by the prince of power of air that is piggyback to bring children into such bondage and deception. It is bringing them mind control. It is taking them over completely. Like I said, try and take away a cell phone from a kid that ain't spirit-filled and born again. And some of them that were, that are not anymore because 
that has taken them out of that position. Ephesians 5, verse 8. Therefore do not be partakers with them, for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Walk as children of the light, for the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, finding out what is acceptable to the Lord. And of course, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are what? Because the days are what? They are evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. We were once darkness. We were asleep. Asleep. There's many, you know, did you ever hear the movies or whatever, Walking Dead? Well, there's a lot of Walking Dead because they're asleep. They are dead, spiritually dead. But they may seem alive, but they're actually spiritually dead. And you and I were once asleep, blinded. Slaves to satanic influencing networking. We are under the power of suggestion related to fear. Think of what fear does an individual. It says God's not given us a spirit of fear, but power, love, and sound mind. So what does it do? It nullifies power to overcome. It takes a mind under control. And it will produce a hardened heart. Suggestion related to fear, lust, strange fetishes, and desires without understanding. People do things and they don't even understand why they're doing them. That's why you and I want to be controlled by the Holy Spirit, not by any NAT. I want to go to stay in Ephesians 5 and go back to verse 1. As Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. But fornication and all unclean and covetousness, let it not even be named among you as is fitting to, for saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking nor coarse gesturing, which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no fornicator, unclean person, nor covetous, Man who is an idolater has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and God. Why? Because they have been taken captive in their minds to serve darkness. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Go to verse 17 again. Therefore do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is, and do not be drunk with wine, in which is dissipation, but be filled with what? The Holy Spirit, what's he doing? He's giving us the cure. Speaking. Hello. Speaking. Speaking to one another in sounds and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord, giving thanks always. He says always. Why? Because that's how you constantly keep it. It says praise shall be consistently on my mouth. Why? Because you're constantly breaking it. Giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting to one another in the fear and reverence to God. All controlled under the subliminal waves of suggestion, porn, gangster movies, drug smuggling movies, rap music, hip hop. People don't even know that that is voodoo. Oh man, I like hip hop. That's why you act the way you do. Unstable. Look at the media, fake news and lying news. It causes, it puts, man, you know how many people are in bondage with this um, CNN and all these other fake news places that lie, literally lie. It blows me away. I mean, they lie like candy. And these politicians that are Democratic Party, they just stand up there and lie and make up things. I mean, it baffles me because they are under mind control. 
They had been taken captive by Lucifer. Remember, what was Satan? He was a praise and worship leader. These people are singing his hymns. Hallelujah. Religious violence. We are to expose our control handlers. They are handlers. These are powers of darkness that want to handle you. In the deep state, in the drug trafficking and child smuggling and child molestation, in Hollywood, they have handlers that abuse these children. Physical handlers, but there are also spiritual handlers. They're called witches and morlocks. They're handlers. They've been assigned to each and every one, even a believer they've been assigned to. Their purpose is to bring curses and try and keep you in spells and, and spell position and keep you bound so you can't advance. Oh, hallelujah. We have to ex expose our controlled handlers of suggestion and remove their, their and, and power, breaking and cutting loose from them, especially the emotional attachments and the physical attachments. They all set a false perception and blindness to the truth. And they create an evil fruit. Go to Deuteronomy for a moment in, verse, in chapter 18. Deuteronomy. Everybody okay? You know, and it's got nothing to, I, I don't, I don't want to make it like it's a political or thing. It's about righteousness and wickedness. It's about light and truth and darkness and deception. It's about life and death. And one promotes death and another promotes life. And people that can't see that are disconnected from life and the life giver. And they have no idea even they proclaim that they know the life giver. Deuteronomy 18 and verse 9. Let's speak it. When you come into the land which the Lord your God has given you, you shall not learn to follow the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any who makes his son or her daughter pass through the fire. Today they are doing that. How are they doing that? Abortion. It's the same thing. Or one who practices witchcraft. Or a soothsayer, or one who interprets om omens, or a sorcerer, or one who conjures what? Spells. Why does someone conjure a spell? To put, take control over them. How? In their mind. Or a medium, or a spiritist, or one who calls up the dead. Why is the Lord warning us? He's saying because if you touch and do any of these things, you will open yourself to mind control by them. Oh, hallelujah. Is everybody okay? For all who do these things are an abomination to who? To the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God drives them out from before you. You shall be blameless before the Lord your God. For these nations which you will dispo uh, dispossess, listen to soothsayers and diviners. But as for you, the Lord your God has not appointed such for you. It's amazing in how many people still read their horoscopes that are called Christians and open themselves up to it. Still read their fortune cookies. Satan's influential networking system brings spells and curses, brings confusion. It brings sleepiness. And how does it bring sleepiness to the ways of God? It brings compromise, complacency, and laziness. That is all mind control. 
It brings sickness and blindness to the truth in the way of walking in the truth. The power of suggestion. That's why you and I are always battling over influence, voices. In Galatians chapter 3. Hallelujah. Oh, praise God. You don't you know anybody that you you care for and you love but you can't trust? <laughs> you know? And, and, or because instability can't keep their words, can't be consistent. Why? I just, they just don't feel like it. No. Where does that come from? Amen. It's called mind control. Galatians 3 and verse 1. Oh, foolish Galatians, who has be what? Be with you. Who has brought you under control of your thoughts? You that you, uh, who has bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth. But he says, who has bewitched you? Who put you under a spell? Who's taking control of your mind? Because of whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified. This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of the flesh or the faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, and you are now being made perfect in the flesh? Have you begun in the Spirit, and now you are being perfected in the flesh? <laughs> Bewitched. Why? Because you've got a spell on you. It's a spell to gain control. Started, they started in the spirit, now they have confidence in the flesh, and they are promoting the things of the flesh. Up and down individuals. Did you ever hear that up and down goes the funny clown? <laughs> you never heard that? Well, when I was a kid, my mom used to make me sing it when I brushed my teeth. Up and down goes the funny clown. <laughs> no wonder why I had nightmares. Man, I used to see all kinds of stuff when I was a kid. Whoa. I saw witches' heads on chairs spinning. I'd be in my crib freaking out. I, I still remember that stuff. They thought I was nuts. I thought I was nuts. It's because they practiced witchcraft over me. And, and we didn't know it. Hallelujah. 1 John chapter 5. My dad and I, was, when I was a kid, we used to stay up and white, watch Fright Night. Frankenstein, the werewolf, and Dracula. And, I mean, we'd be up till 3 o'clock in the morning. And I'd be, be right behind him watching. Freaked out of my mind. Couldn't go to sleep all night. I wonder why. Of course, you know, they didn't know. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. They were good Roman Catholics. They were Roman and never found it. <laughs> then when I got saved, I introduced them to the truth. Hallelujah. Then they wonder why they had to put up with me for all those years. 1 John chapter 5, verse 18. And speaking, and we know that whoever is born of God does not what? Does not get caught up that does realize about this satanic, influential network, knows about it. Do you know how many believers don't get it? See, they just look at sin as being sin, like an act of doing something bad, not realizing that there is a network system that's influencing them, 
trying to put a spell on them to control them. For we know whoever has been born of God realizes this, breaks it off. But he who has been born of God keeps himself. How is he going to keep himself? That's why it says, come out from among them. And the wicked one does not touch him or controls them. But if you're touching things that are unclean, you're going to get controlled. We know that we are of God and the whole world lies under the sway <laughs> of the wicked one. The, the sway. What's that sway? It's, it's influence. Amen? <laughs> it's, it's suggestion. The power of suggestion. And we know that the Son of God has come and given us an understanding of all of this. And that we, that we may know him who is true and that we are in him who is true. In his Son, Jesus Christ, this is the true God and eternal life. Little children, keep yourselves from idols that have influence. The swear the wicked one. The whole world is under the Satan's influential networking system to control the thoughts and minds of humanity. Remember, the devil wanted to create his own race. The Lord said and warned to Adam and Eve and even to the serpent that the serpent seed would be crushed. Eventually, but there would be hatred between the two seeds, between the two bloodlines. There would be a battle of races. The race between righteousness against good and evil. He wanted to create his own race. People don't understand what's happening right now. He wants to create a genderless race. Yep, yep. Hybrid humans. Yep. With full control by Satan's kingdom. But you and I have escaped it. They are taken over by the mask of deception and suggestion, influence and being. You and I are rescued by being hidden in Christ. I want to share a couple quick things. Have you ever noticed that when you were a kid, the skies were different? When you and I were younger, the skies were different. The clouds were fluffy and puffy. They were different. I'm not saying that some of them are not. But I've noticed new clouds, different clouds. Now, there are clouds that a jet leaves. They're called contrails because it's associated with water. But then those, clou those clouds dissipate. They don't fall down. They dissipate. They're gone very quickly. But there are other clouds that you can find and see in the airs. They're called chemtrails. They've been being released from the beginning of Obama. And maybe longer, I'm not sure. I don't know if you've noticed. They call it a season of flu viruses. But have you ever noticed that the viruses these days are getting worse? I mean, in fact, it almost seems like they're not a virus. It's, it's almost like it's not a flu. It's like, man, you just can't shake it and you carry it for such a long, long time. These are synthetic biology and nanotechnology that's being released in the atmosphere. I'm not going to go deep into this. But it's purpose because who rules the earth? Satan. He's got technology, doesn't he? It brings influence. It's purpose. Look at how much more violence there is these days. How much more hatred there is these days. Amen? How much more people are, the younger generation is not as smart anymore. 
I'm not saying all of them, amen. I'm saying the majority. The majority of the younger generation is not as intellect as the other generations. There's been so much increase of addiction, sickness, suicide, murder. All of these things are increasing tremendously. And it's by suggestion. Almost like hypnosis, spells, mind control. Which can also be influenced by synthetic biology, nanotechnology. Again, I remember uh, when, seeing fluffy and puffy clouds and, you know, I mean, I'm not saying that we still don't. In fact, some days we see a clear sky, but some days you see streaks across, lines, feathered clouds, crisscrosses. Ropes, they're like ropes that go across. Webs and haze, clouds. Those are not normal clouds. They are produced by chemtrails that are being released even by commercial flights. And Trump has promised to begin to stop this. He knows about it. In fact, right now, it's, it's, it's been global for such a long time that, that there is a veil over the whole earth now. There's a veil. It lies over the whole globe. It's even forming mirror images of structures in certain places. Of nature. It's trying to duplicate things to bring a false perception. So that eventually mankind can be wiped out and Satan can rule with an artificial. Is everybody okay? Hallelujah. Let's go to uh, Colossians chapter 1. Yeah, praise God. Colossians chapter 1. Oh, hallelujah. In verse, uh, let's see, verse 9. Colossians 1 verse 9. Let's speak it for this reason. We also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding. That you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Strengthened with all might according to his glorious power for all patience and long suffering with joy. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has delivered us from the power of deception. Does everybody get it? He's delivered us from these things and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of His love in whom we have redemption through His blood and the forgiveness of all sins. We have been delivered from the power, this power of influence. If you're walking right with the Lord, if you are hidden in the secret place, of course he says, who may abide in the tabernacle of God, but he who has a pure heart and clean hands. Go to James chapter 3. They have tested rain and have actually found under microscopes metal metal rain that's coming down certain kind of structural octagon things 
formed by the chemicals in the air from chem, uh, chemtrails. <clears throat> James chapter 3 and verse 13. Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter and envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. And this is what we're seeing being manifested. It is a demonic wisdom that wants to steal, kill, and destroy mankind. For where envy and self-seeking exist and confusion and every evil thing are there. How? By power of influence. Amen. Does everybody get it? Look at this. Where, for where envy and self-seeking exist, there's what? Confusion. Confusion. Well, where does confusion from come from? Suggestion. And every evil thing are there. Why? Because they, this wisdom of Satan's kingdom is superseding an individual's own wisdom. But that's where you and I must have the wisdom of God. That's why we're being trained for this stuff. We're being trained to understand what's going on. People have no idea how deep this rabbit hole goes. It goes quite deep. But the wisdom that is from above is first pure, then peaceable and gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Now the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who make peace. Wow. Wisdom. And I want to close at 1 John chapter 2. The power of suggestion. I'm sure some of you will start looking in the sky a little bit more. You'll see them. I'm telling you, one day I was, one day, I was going to my second home called Lowe's. And as I was driving there, I looked, I, I, I believe the Holy Spirit just quickened me and just... I looked up, and these were fresh. And there were so many trails, I couldn't count them. There was hundreds. And, all, and, and while they were up there, you could see it streaming, falling down. The stuff that was in these trails was streaming and falling down. I thought, whoa. I went home and loaded up with vitamins. <laughs> Clean my sinuses out and everything. I'm like, man, you know, it's, I don't know. It's, we need to walk around with oxygen masks or something. <laughs> Just decree the blood and stay healthy by the stripes of Jesus. And don't let the influence mislead you. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 20. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. But you have an anointing from the who? The Holy One, and you know what? All things. Hello. I have not written to you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you will also abide in the Son and the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, everlasting, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try 
to deceive you, manipulate you, and bring you under mind control. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you, because the anointing teaches you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it has taught you, you will abide in him. Abiding, being connected. That's why it's important to exchange every day. Amen? Exchange those things. Break every emotional attachment. Exchange your sicknesses and diseases. Exchange your fears. Exchange things for the promises of God. You know, in the movie Matrix, one of the things that Morpheus was showing him was being careful because so many were unplugged. Unplugged from the system. In other words, they were under mind control. Be careful what you associate with and who you associate with. The word tells us and warns us, bad company corrupts good habits. Why? Because it will start influencing you, that power of suggestion. Demons carry a power of suggestion. Fallen angels carry a power of suggestion. They're trying to bring us under control. They're trying to place spells on you. You know, when we got saved, this may sound wild, and you might have heard us in some of the teachings. I might have shared some things already. But after I gotten saved, the witches that were praying against me, I don't know how long, showed up at my house. They showed up at my house. My wife and I were at a deliverance service at a church. And they were in back of the church praying against us. And they knew everything about my life. My time in the military, they knew everything about me. And they came to try to take me back under control again. This is no joke. This is real. There are witches and morlocks. And high priests of Satan assigned to you to bring you under a spell. They want to curse you. They stand before the Lord and accuse you. They want to try and snag you for every unfulfilled vow you never repented for. Remember, they're legalists. They try to manipulate as much as they can. But it's your responsibility and my responsibility to shut the door to the enemy. Make no place for the devil make no place for the devil why because he knows we'll be taken captive again he came to set the captives free who were blinded and taken control by their minds their thoughts that prayer in the penetrating prayer booklet about godly thoughts is phenomenal i suggest you at least read it once a week is everybody okay this is happening now. The fight is on stronger and stronger. But I'm telling you, we already have the victory. Amen? But we got to cooperate. We can't be stupid. You know, we can't fall in that place of stupor. We must be alert. That's why it says the devil comes as a roaring lion. Think about that. What's a roaring lion? It's a voice of suggestion. To bring God's people under mind control again. But he says, look at if you'll be consistent, amen, you'll be alert, you'll be vigilant, you'll stay alert. You'll stay connected to the presence of God. You'll stay connected to his word. You'll feed your spirit with the word of God. You'll worship and get filled and stay dressed and armed and ready to battle and be ready when the enemy comes. Amen? Because he's going to come. He comes in many forms. Sometimes you don't even realize it. But God always makes a way of escape for us. Amen. Praise God. Father, we are honored and blessed. We thank you for your word and revelation and training tonight. And I pray, Lord, that this will become a part of our arsenal to see what's happening so that we do not come under control by the voice of evil and suggestion to do the things that you don't want us to do. Lord, I'm asking tonight that 
there be a visitation to each and every one of us here and everyone that's listening. A visitation to bring revelation, illumination, light to expose darkness and freedom from all control of all any evil entity or the suggestion of wickedness. But that we come under the control of the Holy Spirit, washed by the blood, healed by the stripes of Jesus, and the anointing that breaks all yoke of bondage, that we would be led as sons and daughters of God and not misled. Lord, I pray blessing over each and every one. Seal us tonight, Lord, with the blood of Christ and the Holy Spirit, that this word of seeds of righteousness will grow and bear fruit for your glory in Jesus' name. Nobody said amen. amen. Hallelujah. Be blessed and stay dressed with the Lord.